Hello friends, welcome to Fairs Cloud Learn to Lead. Good morning to all the students. Today we will start the December weekly current fairs and today we will discuss the first week of the December. It means we will cover the first to eighth of December current fairs. So this video is very important and you can revise weekly current fair from this video. So watch this video carefully and watch till last. But first of all, you have to download our application Careers Cloud from the Google Play Store. After that, log in with your email ID. Then click on this Crack Current Fair section to subscribe our Current Fairs for one year as well as for two years. Both the subscription prices are very much low. But the most important thing, what we are covering under this one year and the two year subscription, we are providing you daily section. In the daily section, you will receive three things. One is the detailed Current Fair. Second is the question and answer format of Current Fairs. But both will be provided in the form of PDF or in the form of ebook. And third is the quiz section and this can be attempted only on our application on daily basis next is the weekly section again we are providing three things one is the detail current fair second is the question and answer format but both things will be provided in the pdf format and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on our application on weekly basis Next is the monthly section and in the monthly section we are providing you four type of PDFs. One is the detailed current fair PDF which is known as study PDF. Next all the detailed current fairs will be converted in the form of question and answer. That's why it is known as question and answer PDF so that you can revise all the current fairs in the question and answer format. Next is the best 100 current fairs will be provided that is also provided in the form of question and answer. And last is the pocket PDF. It means one liner, two liner or the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise these current fairs very quickly before your exam. Next is topic wise current fair. This is very important section because we are providing 20 most important topic wise PDF. If you want to revise one or two particular topics, then you can use this topic wise PDF. If you are a banking student, then we are providing three things. One is detail. Second is question and answer format of current fairs, but only related to banking and economy. And third is the quiz section. It is also only related to banking and economy. And you can attempt this quiz section only on our application on monthly basis. Next is exam PDF. If you want to cover all the current fairs before your exam of particular year, then you can use this exam PDF. Next is special current fair section. In the special current fair, we are providing you budget and economic survey. Two things we are providing. One is detail budget and economic survey. Second is question and answer format of budget and economic survey. It means you can recall that examiner can make these type of questions from budget and economic survey. If you are preparing for your respective state exam, then we are also providing state current fairs and we are covering every state and union territory. So all these things comes under only one subscription. First of all, you have to just download our application careers cloud, then click on this crack current fair section and you can subscribe for one year as well as for two years. And if you want 10% extra discount, then you can use this code ASH10. If you have any query, then you can email us on this email ID or you can call us on this number. So let's start the weekly quiz or the weekly current fairs and today we will discuss the December first week. It means we will cover first to eighth of December current fairs. So here is the first question. Name the organization or ministry that has recently released a study report titled as Carbon Capture, Utilization and Storage Policy Framework and its Deployment Mechanism in India. So remember the name of the report is Carbon Capture. And this report is basically released by Niti Ayog. So answer of this question is second. So the National Institution for Transforming India has released a study report titled as Carbon Capture, Utilization and Storage Policy Framework and its Deployment Mechanism in India. And it is prepared by one company which is known as MN Dastur. MN Dastur Private Limited which received financial assistance under the research scheme of the Niti Ayog. And it explores the importance of carbon capture and their utilization as an emission reduction strategy to achieve deep decarbonization from the hard to abate sectors. Moving to next question. Which of the following points is or are incorrect with respect to the 53rd? This number is important. 53rd International Film Festival of India held in Goa in November 2022. So let's find out the incorrect statement. First one is. The Iranian film Mitra, directed by Nadav Lepid, was awarded as the ICFT UNESCO Gandhi Medal at the 53rd International Film Festival of India. This statement is wrong because this film is not named as Mitra, it is named as Nargesi. N E N A R G E S I, Nargesi, and it is not directed by Nadav Lepid, it is directed by Payam. Directed by Payam. 
and this film was awarded as the icft unesco gandhi medal at the 53rd international film festival of india next is the silver peacock for the best actor was awarded to nadir saviour for his work on the turkish film no end this statement is true next is wahid mobasri for no end was honored with silver peacock for the best actor male and daniela marin navarro for i have electric dream is honored with the silver peacock for the best actor in the female category so this statement is also true and even you can remember the spanish film i have electric dreams directed by valentina mariol won the prestigious golden peacock for the best film of the festival and this statement is also true and mega star chiran jeevi ji receives the indian film personality of the year award 2022 this statement is also very important and this international film festival of india was jointly organized by national film development corporation and the entertainment society of goa so only statement which is incorrect is first so answer of this question is first move into next question to which company india has provided financial assistance of 100 million dollar to ease its difficult economic challenges and uh, this country is maldives so answer of this question is one so india has provided financial assistance of 100 million dollar in the form of budgetary support to the maldives government to ease its difficult economic challenges and a symbolic check was handed over by the high commissioner of india to the maldives under the minister of foreign affairs during the ceremony held at the ministry of foreign affairs in maldives and the partnership between the maldives and india will provide crucial assistance in the progress and development of the maldives move into next question in november 2022 the securities and exchange board of india increased the investment limit of mutual funds in the debt instrument issued by single issuer to dash of the net asset value from 10% so now it is 12% so answer of this question is second so securities and exchange board of india has increased the investment limit of mutual funds in the debt instruments issued by single issuer to 12% of the net asset value from 10% with effective from 29th of november 2022 to all new schemes and existing schemes will be exempt until the maturity of underlying debt and money market securities and the circular is issued by sebi and it is issued in exercise of its power comfort under section 11 of the sebi act of 1992 and remember sebi was established in 1880 1988 but it become sebi act came into force in 1992 move into next question which bank has recently partnered with open financial technologies private limited to launch asia's first end to end embedded finance platform known as zwich known as zwich and uh, this bank is sbm bank india answer of this question is 4 so sbm bank india partnered with open financial technologies private limited announced a strategic partnership to launch asia's first end to end embedded finance platform known as zwich and zwich will offer a no code low code and full stack application programming interference solution that enables financial technological companies to build their own financial products using zwich technology stack which comprises drag drop dashboard drag drop dashboard low code plugins along with 300 plus apis or the application programming interface moving to next question Which of the following companies has recently agreed to merge with the Singapore Airlines and Tata Sons and this company is Vistara and Air India so answer of this question is both 1 and 2 so Singapore Airlines and also Tata Sons agreed to merge with Air India and Vistara with this Singapore Airlines is also investing almost 20500 million rupees or you can say 250 million dollar in Air India as a part of the transaction as a result singapore airlines would hold a 25.1% share in the enlarged air india group that would have a significant presence in all important market segments and singapore airlines and tata aim to complete this merger by the march 2024 and air india has received its first boeing 777 200 long range vehan which means dawn of the new era 
is the name given to the aircraft with the registration VTAEF as per the induction plan. Move into next question. Name the space company that has recently propelled its moon spacecraft named as CubeSat Equilibrium Lunar Earth Point 6U spacecraft in November 2022. And this company is Zaksa Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. So, answer of this question is 1. So, remember, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency has successfully used steam or you can say water to propel its CubeSat Equilibrium Lunar Earth Point 6U spacecraft that was launched as one of the payload aboard National Aeronautics and Space Administration Orion spacecraft. And this is world's first successful orbit control beyond low Earth orbit using a steam or water propulsion system. Just remember the question as same as in slide. Moving to next question. Xiang Zeming, former president of Dash country, passed away in the month of November 2022. So, name is Xiang Zemin and he was the former president of China. Answer of this question is 3. Who presided over more than a decade of economic growth after the 1989-1989 crackdown against the pro-democracy protest passed away at the age of 96 in Shanghai in China. He died from leukemia and multiple organ failure. And Xiang Zemin served as the head of the Communist Party from 1989 to 2002 and he served as the President of China from 1993 to 2003. Moving to next question. Who has recently taken charge as the Secretary of the Department of Revenue under the Ministry of Finance? Static question, just remember the question as same as in slide and this personality is Sanjay Malhotra. Answer of this question is 3. So, Sanjay Malhotra has formally taken charge as the Secretary under the Department of Revenue under the Ministry of Finance and prior to his joining as the Secretary of the Revenue under this department, he was handling the Department of Financial Services under this ministry. Moving to next question. In which state the 10-day Hornbill Festival is being celebrated in December 2022? Again, very important question. But Hornbill Festival is very famous and this is celebrated in the state of Nagaland. Answer of this question is second. So, the Hornbill Festival, the biggest and the most important festival in the Northeast India is annually observed from 1st to 10th of December at the Naga Heritage Village in Kisama. In Kisama, located at a distance of 12 km from Kohima in Nagaland. And 2022 marks the 23rd edition of the Hornbill Festival and Jagdeep Dankarji, who is the Vice President of India, graced the inaugural function of the festival as the chief guest. And it is the main celebration of the Naga warrior tribes and it is generally observed for 10 days, like 1st of December to 10th of December. Moving to next question. As per the World Bank 37th Migration and Development Brief 2022, India is all set to achieve more than dash in remittance in 2022 and total amount is 100 billion dollars. So, answer of this question is 4. So, the World Bank in its 37th, 37th Migration and Development Brief 2022 titled as Remittance Brave Global Headwinds Special Focus Climate Migration. This report stated that India is all set to receive more than 100 billion dollars in yearly remittance in the year of 2022. This means migrant workers from India will send a record of 100 billion dollar in the year of 2022 to their home country India despite global headwinds like rising prices. This is for the first time in a single country will receive more than 100 billion dollar in yearly remittance and India remains the world top recipient of the remittance. And the growth of the global remittance flow is expected to be 4.9% in the year of 2022 and remittance to South Asia grew as an estimate of 3.5% like total is $163 billion in 2022. Moving to next question. Name the bank that has recently authorized by the RBI to undertake government business. This is again very important. And this bank is Tamil Nadu Mercantile Bank. Answer of this question is second. So, Reserve Bank of India authorized Tamil Nadu Mercantile Bank to undertake government business on behalf of the RBI. An agreement 
appointing Tamil Nadu Mercantile Bank as an agency bank of the RBI to undertake government agency business was signed by the bank and the Reserve Bank of India in Mumbai, Maharashtra. And the Reserve Bank of India modified guidelines on the digital digital lending that was issued in September 2022 to protect customers from the exorbitant interest rates by the certain entities and also check unethical loan recovery practices effective from 1st of December 2022. moving to next question which country has recently signed an agreement with india for an economic development cooperation fund loan worth rupees almost 1500 crore rupees to develop nagpur mumbai super communication expressway project so this is very important and this country is south korea answer of this question is second so india and south korea signed an agreement for an economic development cooperation fund loan worth rupees 1495 crore or the 1500 crore for the establishment of an intelligent transport system on the Nagpur Mumbai super communication expressway project with a goal to improve traffic management efficiency and this is the first project that is funded by the EDCF or you can say economic development cooperation fund loaned by the government of the republic of korea or south korea moving to next question Which state's green startup Tree Tag has won the Climbthon 2022 under the category of Life on Land? So this is a startup which belongs to Kerala. So answer of this question is second. So Tree Tag, a green startup founded by climate conscious individuals from the Kerala, striving to reduce carbon emission through the technological integrated afforestation project, has won the Climbthon 2022, the hackathon held at Kerala. technological innovation zone in kochi kerala from 26th to 27th of november 2022 and the tree tag team won the award under the category of life on land addressing the problem statement such as monitoring and protecting existing forest ecosystem and the wildlife trust of india has selected the man animal conflict mitigation team which is a eight member team from the munnar forest division of kerala for its award this year for reducing incidents of man animal conflict in the region and the team will receive an award on 2nd of december 2022 a a anna a month long exhibition that started on 1st of december 2022 in kochi kerala moving to next question what is the theme of united nation world world acquired amino deficiency syndrome or aids day 2022 that was observed across the globe on 1st of december 2022 so united nation aids day 2022 was observed across the globe on 1st of december 2022 with the theme equalize answer of this question is second very important question and un aids or the united nation program on aids has been campaigning the world aids day since its creation in the year of 2004 and universal symbol is the red ribbon red ribbon so the red ribbon is the universal symbol of aids awareness and support for people living with the hiv moving to next question in which states beach india's first permanent ramp for the persons with disability was inaugurated in november 2022 and this beach is marina beach and state is tamil nadu so answer of this question is 3 so india's first permanent ramp for the persons with disability was inaugurated at Marina Beach in Chennai, Tamil Nadu, and the facility has been developed with the funding from Singhara Chennai, Singhara Chennai 2.0 at an estimated cost of 1.14 crore rupees, and the facility was established by the Greater Chennai Corporation or GCC. Moving to next question, the 12th edition of Agni Warrior Exercise 2022. It is a bilateral exercise between Dash Armed Forces and Indian Armed Forces. conducted at maharashtra in november 2022 first of all name of the exercise is agni warrior and it is a exercise between india and singapore so answer of this question is first india and singapore third it was held in maharashtra and fourth it is the 12th edition of this exercise so 12th edition of the agni warrior exercise a bilateral exercise between the singapore armed forces and indian army armed forces was held at firing ranges in the maharashtra from 13 to 30th of november 2022 moving to next question which country has recently signed a memorandum of understanding with india 
to enhance the professional practices between the two countries. Again, this is important question and this country is Chile. Answer of this question is second. So the Comptroller and Auditor General or CAG of India and the Comptroller General of the Republic of Chile signed a memorandum of understanding to develop institutional and professional capacities and learn from each other best practices in Chile. This agreement was signed in Chile. The MOU was formally signed by Girish Chandra Murmu. Girish Chandra Murmuji who is the Comptroller and Auditor General of India. Moving to next question. Which of the following points are correct with respect to the recent step taken by the Reserve Bank of India? So let's find out which steps are true. First one is RB revises framework of categorization of urban cooperative banks for regulatory purposes with effect from the 1st of December 2022. So RB has adopted the following four tiered regulatory framework from the existing two tiered framework for the categorization of urban cooperative banks in order to strengthen the financial soundness of the urban cooperative banks. So RB prescribed a minimum net worth of 2 crore rupees for the tier 1 urban cooperative banks operating in the single district and rupees 5 crore for all other urban, urban cooperative banks. So first statement is true. RB also eases rule for the foreign branches or the subsidiaries of the bank or all India financial institutions to deal in the financial product that are not permitted in India with effect from 1st of December 2022. This statement is also true. Letters of cooperation were exchanged between RB and Financial Services Agency Japan in the field of central counterparties to improve the mutual cooperation. This statement is also true. So all these statements are correct but first statement is important. So answer of this question is all A, B, C. Moving to next question. Name the mutual fund that has recently launched India's first passive passive tax saver fund named as IN50. So this is important question and this is IFL mutual fund. Answer of this question is 3. So IFL mutual fund has launched India's first passive, passive saver fund named as IFL equity linked savings scheme nifty 50 tech saver index fund known as IN50 which will be on sale through the new fund offering or NFO. And the scheme was launched after the capital market regulator securities and exchange board of India allowed fund houses to launch passive funds in the May 2022. Moving to next question. Name the company that has recently interbank rate forex card India's first true zero markup travel card. So this company who launched this interbank rate forex card is bookmyforex.com. Answer of this question is second. So online foreign exchange marketplace bookmyforex.com has launched interbank rate multi-currency forex card which is India's first Q0 markup travel card and it is a co-branded multi-currency and card developed in association with the Yes Bank and M2P financial company and it is powered by Visa and during regular banking hours international travelers will be able to buy forex card at interbank rates with zero added markup that is the live and the actual rate as seen on the search engines at which bank deal with each other for the major currencies. Moving to next question. Which of the following points are incorrect? Incorrect with respect to the 2022 Burgundy Private Huron India 500 list published in the month of December 2022. So let's find out which statement is incorrect. First one is Reliance Industries Limited is the most valuable listed company in India with a valuation of 17.2 lakh crore followed by the Tata Consultancy Services. And this is very important because according to the list, Reliance Industries is the most valuable listed company in India with a valuation of 17.2 lakh crore and it is up, up, up 3.6% from 2021 followed by Tata Consultancy Services and third rank goes to HDFC Bank. So this statement is true. Next is Infosys Limited is the largest private employer in India which employs almost 5,92,000 people followed by TCS. This statement is wrong because it is not Infosys, it is TCS. Tata Consultancy Service which employs almost 5,92,195 people is the largest private employer in India and it is followed by Quest Corp. Quest Corporation Limited. So next is Serum Institute of India is the most valued unlisted company in India followed by Baijus. 
so the pharmaceutical company serum institute of india is the most valued unlisted company in india followed by edu technological company or education technological company giant byju this statement is true so only incorrect statement is b so answer of this question is second only b moving to next question in december 2022 the kamla devi chatopadhyay nif book prize 2022 was awarded to the chipko movement a people's movement authored by whom the chipko movement a people's movement book was authored by shekhar pathak answer of this question is one so a kamla devi chatopadhyay nif book prize 2022 was awarded to one book named as the chipko movement a chipko movement a people's movement a book on the popular forest conservation campaign chipko movement written by historian and activist shekhar pathak and the new india foundation has been awarding the annual kamla devi chatopadhyay nif book prize and the book the chipko movement a people movement has been translated from hindi to english by manisha choudhury by manisha choudhury and 2022 was the fifth edition of the kamla devi chatopadhyay nif book prize so the keyword here kamla devi chatopadhyay nif book prize goes to the chipko movement book and this is authored by shekhar patel and this book was translated from hindi to english by manisha choudhury moving to next question name the country that has recently assumed the presidency of the united nation security council for a month of december 2022 for a month of december 2022 and this country is india answer of this question is second so india assumed the presidency of united nation security council for the month of december and the second time in its two year tenure as an elected member of the council in 2021-22 india had earlier assumed the united nation security council presidency in august 2021 during india presidency two high level signature events will be held one is on 14th of december 2022 on reformed multilateralism and one is on 15th of december 2022 on reformed multilateralism and will be chaired by external affairs minister s jay shankar ji moving to next question in december 2022 the rbi granted a conditional approval to the carlyle group and the virvanta group or the holdings to acquire 9.99% stake each in which bank and this bank is yes bank so answer of this question is 4 so reserve bank of india has granted a conditional approval to carlyle group and the virvanta holdings to acquire 9.99% stake or the paid up share capital each in yes bank through the subscription to equity shares and share warrants of the bank the proposed investment is by ca bescu investment which is a part of the carlyle group and virvanta holdings an affiliate of the funds managed by the advent so don't remember anything don't remember any technical term just remember the question as same as in slide moving to next question who has recently won the best director award at the new york film critics circle award 2022 very important question and this director is ss rajamouli answer of this question is 4 so ss rajamouli has won the best director award for movie rise roar and revolt or the triple r at the new york film critics circle awards and the new york film critics circle founded in 1935 and it is said to be the oldest critics group in the united states with members from the newspaper magazine and the online publications move into next question as of december 2022 who is india's permanent representative to the united nation static question and this personality is ruchira kamboj answer of this question is 4 so united nation security council permanent representative to the united nation is ruchira kamboj and its headquarter is in new york and uh, this united nation security council was founded in 1945 this is static question remember as same as in slide next question is which of the following points are correct with respect to the operational guidelines for the production linked incentive scheme for drones and the drone components notified by the ministry of civil aviation in december 2022 so let's find out the correct statement but first of all remember this pli or production link incentive scheme with a funding of 120 crore rupees has been authorized by the government of india and it would be implemented during the 2022 23 and 2024 25 period first point is 
this production linked incentive will be extended only to the companies in india that manufacture drones and drone components this statement is true the scheme is open to the micro small and medium enterprises and startups in india that manufacture drones and have an annual sales turnover of rupees 5 crore this is wrong this is not 5 crore this is 2 crore so this statement is wrong Indian non micro small and medium enterprises that manufacture drones must have an annual sales turnover of rupees 4 crore this statement is true so only correct statement is a and c so answer of this question is 4 moving to next question according to the turning the side on internal displacement a developmental approach to solutions report more than 100 million people were forcibly displaced in 2022 for the first time which organization created this report along with the internal displacement monitoring center and this organization is UNDP or United Nations Development Program so answer of this question is 4 so remember the name of the report turning the tide on internal displacement and according to this report more than 100 million people were forcibly displaced in the year of 2022 for the first time and the majority of whom were forcibly displayed within their own country and the report was created by United Nations Development Program in partnership with the Internal Displacement Monitoring Center or IDMC and IDMC gathered this data from Jan 2021 to Jan 2022 it means it is a one year data moving to next question which of the following points are incorrect incorrect with respect to the digital rupee retail segment a central bank digital currency as of December 2022 so let's find out the correct statement and uh, incorrect statement basically and first statement is RB launched its pilot on the retail digital currency rupee in four cities one is in Mumbai second is New Delhi third one is Bengaluru and fourth one is Bhuvneshwar this statement is true in this regard RB issued 1.30 crore to the four banks state bank of India ICIC Axis and HDFC participating banks based on their indents in the first phase this is basically wrong statement because in this regard rb issued 1.71 1.71 crore to four participating banks one is state bank of india second is icici bank third one is yes bank not ic not axis bank this is yes bank and fourth one is idfc first bank idfc first bank and it is based on their indents so second statement is wrong next is e rupee can provide access to a safe money for the payment and settlement as it is a direct liability of the rbi and uh, you can also remember this e rupee can provide access to the safe money because it can be converted to other form of money like deposits with bank and the retail digital rupee will not earn any interest so this statement is also true so answer of this question only incorrect statement is b answer of this question is second Moving to next question. In December 2022, the National Payments Corporation of India extended the limiting volume cap of 30% for third party payment application providers in unified payment interface till which date? So it is 31st of December 2024. Answer of this question is 3. So NPCI has extended the deadline for limiting volume cap. To 30 percent for the third party payment application providers in unified payment interface by the two years like 31st of December 2024 at present there is no volume cap and the cap will avoid concentration risk and protect the UPI echo system moving to next question which of the following points are correct with respect to the second edition of earth short price 2022 this is earth short price 2022 let's find out the correct statement first one is kyati an indian startup won the earth short price 2022 under protect and restore nature category under protect and restore category so this statement is true next is indigenous woman of the great barrier reef from australia won the award under the revive our oceans category this statement is also true Next is Mukuru Clean Stoves from the Kenya won the award under the Clean Our Air category. This statement is also true. So there are so many categories but from India, one organization or one Indian startup named as Khayati 
and this startup has won the earth short price 2022 under protect and restore nature category this is very very important and uh, you can also remember william the prince of wales announced the winners of the earth short 2022 the second edition of the annual awards at the award ceremony which was held in united states of america moving to next question it means answer of this question is all abc four is the answer next is which country will assume the chairmanship of this vasenar arrangement a multilateral technology control agreement on 1st of jan 2023 and this is one and only country india answer of this question is 3 so india will assume the chairmanship of the vasenar arrangement a multilateral technological control agreement on 1st of jan 2023 and it is for a period of 1 year and ireland ambassador handed over this chairmanship to india and this vasenar arrangement is a multilateral export control regime established in 1996 monitors the transfers of conventional weapons and dual use goods and it has 42 members and operates on a voluntarily basis where decisions were made by consensus moving to next question in which country mount semeru mount semeru is located mount semeru is located in indonesia answer of this question is second So Indonesia's highest volcano Mount Semeru has erupted releasing searing gases clouds and rivers of lava and prompting authorities to raise their volcano alert to the highest level nearly 2000 people in the densely populated island of Java have been evacuated from the villages close to this peak so remember this is Mount Semeru moving to next question Baguette the staple bread was inscribed into UNESCO's intangible cultural heritage list the baguette belongs to which country so this belongs to France answer of this question is 3 so remember baguette a staple french bread was inscribed into UNESCO's intangible cultural heritage on 30th of November and the baguette is a long and thin loaf made of flour water salt and yeast and it is consumed as a staple in France and some believe that it was invented by august zang august zang a baker and entrepreneur from the vienna in 1839 who introduced the world to the taste of crusty bread with softer inside using a steam oven it gained its official name in 1920 and in march 2021 france nominated the baguette as its candidate for the consideration within the unesco ich list or unesco intangible cultural heritage list Moving to next question. In which valley the Silchar Selhet Festival 2022, the first ever festival celebrating the cultural ties between India and Bangladesh at Silchar Assam on 2nd of December 2022, and this valley is Barak Valley. Answer of this question is four. So on 2nd of December 2022, the Silchar Selhet Festival 2022. and this is the first ever celebrating cultural ties festival between the neighboring regions of india and bangladesh was held in barak valley in silchar assam from 2nd to 4th of december 2022 and the festival celebrated the linguistic as well as the cultural ties between the barak valley region of the assam india and the silhet segment of the bangladesh and the event was organized by the india foundation under the aegis of the ministries of culture under the government of india in association with the bangladesh foundation of the regional studies move into next question in the 17th session of the intergovernmental committee for the safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage 47 new items were included in the unesco intangible cultural heritage list submitted by 60 countries which city hosted the 17th session of the intergovernmental committee for safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage and this city is rabat and this is in morocco answer of this question is second so 28th of november to 3rd of december 2022 the 17th session of the intergovernmental committee for safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage was hosted by north african country the kingdom of morocco as its capital city rabat and uh, it was chaired by samir adare the ambassador of the permanent delegate of the morocco to the unesco and the session witnessed the inclusion of 47 new items in the unesco intangible cultural heritage list submitted by the 60 countries and these include 39 items in the representative list in of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity 
four items in the register of the good safeguarding practices and five in the urgent safeguarding list. Moving to next question. According to the ICAO Aviation Safety Ranking released in December 2022, India ranking has increased to dash rank in the 2022 from 102nd in 2018. Now India's rank is 48th, 48th. So answer of this question is second. So according to the latest aviation safety ranking released by International Civil Aviation Organization or ICAO, India's ranking has risen to 48th up to up from the 102nd in 2018. The ranking which also ranked India ahead of China, China's rank is 49, is the best ever obtained by India. India and Georgia are on the 48th position, each with a score of 85.49%. Other countries in the top 10 are like Singapore. Singapore is on the top. Second rank goes to United, or United Arab Emirates. Third rank goes to Republic of Korea on the third spot. Fourth rank goes to France. And United States was ranked on the 22nd position, while Qatar was ranked on 25th. Pakistan has a score of 70.39%. India now above the China. Israel, Turkey, Denmark, Poland in terms of effective implementation of key safety elements with a score of 85.49%. Moving to next question. Which of the following points are correct with respect to the new index known as the Nifty Bharat Bond Index April 2023? So let's find out which statement is correct. NSC Indices Limited has launched a new index named as Nifty Bharat Bond Index April 2033 under the Nifty Bharat Bond Index within the Nifty Bharat Bond Index series. This statement is true. Next is new tranche of the Bharat Bond ETF. India's first corporate bond exchange traded fund has been launched for a new fund offer of the ETF which will open from the 2nd of December to 8th of December 2022. This statement is also true. Next is the new Bharat Bond ETF and the Bharat Bond Fund of Fund series will mature on 18th of April 2033. This statement is also true. That's why the name is Index April 2023 or April 2033. So answer of this question is all ABC. First is the answer. Moving to next question. In December 2022, Dash-based Gold Sikka Private Limited set up India's first gold automated teller machine or first gold ATM. Very interesting question. And this company is based in Hyderabad, Telangana. Answer of this question is second. So Hyderabad, Telangana-based Gold Sikka Private Limited has set up India's first gold ATM and started its operation in the city of Raghupati Chambers in Hyderabad. And Telangana Women Commission Chairperson inaugurated this gold ATM center and gold ATM supplies in denomination ranging from 0.5 grams to a maximum of 100 grams. And the customer will also get a certificate stating their purity and weight and will be available for 24 hours. Moving to next question. When was Navy Day 2022 observed across India to commemorate the achievements of Operation Trident? Operation Trident launched by the Indian Navy during the India-Pakistan War of 1971. And uh, this was in Navy Day 2022 and it was observed on 4th of December 2022. So Navy Day 2022 was observed across India on 4th of December 2022 to recognize the role of Indian Navy, the maritime arm of the Indian Armed Forces in ensuring the safety of the nation. And the day also commemorated the achievement of Operation Trident, an offensive operation launched by the Indian Navy during the India-Pakistan War of 1971. As a part of the celebration of the Navy Day 2022, the Navy demonstrated India's combat, uh, combat prowess and capability through an operational demonstration at Vishakhapatnam, Andhra Pradesh. For the first time, the Indian Day, Indian Navy Day celebrations are being conducted outside the national capital like New Delhi. And the Indian Navy Week 2022 is observed from 1st to 7th of December, during which various activities and events will be organized. Moving to next question. When was United Nations International Day of Banks? Very important, International Day of Banks. 2022 observed across globe and this was observed on 4th of December 2022 so answer of this question is 4. 
so international day of the banks was observed across the globe on 4th of december to recognize the vital role of the banking system in the member states in contributing to the improvement of the standard of living and 4th of december 2022 marks the third international day of banks and according to india brand equity foundation india accounts for 40% of the global digital transactions compared to the world industrialized nation and the indian banking system consists of 12 public sector banks 22 private sector banks 44 foreign banks 43 regional rural banks and 1484 cooperative banks and 96000 regional cooperative banks in addition to the cooperative credit institutions so total 12 public sector banks are there 22 private sector banks are there 44 foreign banks and 43 regional rural banks move into next question in which state tungreshwar wildlife sanctuary tungreshwar wildlife sanctuary is situated static question and this wildlife sanctuary belongs to maharashtra answer of this question is second so the supreme court exempted maharashtra tungreshwar wildlife sanctuary from its 3rd june order mandating the creation of a 1 km eco sensitive zone around all protected areas in india it also stated that practical difficulties and ground realities will have to be taken into account before having a uniform order for creating esz or eco sensitive zone as mandated by the 3rd june order move into next question which country has recently signed migration and mobility partnership with india for easier access to study research and work between the both countries and this country is germany answer of this question is four so a comprehensive migration and mobility partnership agreement was signed between india and germany for easier access to study research and work between both countries and it was signed by indian union minister s jay shankar ji under the ministry of external affairs and it will facilitate two way movement of the students professional and researchers and also address the challenges of the illegal migration move into next question which of the following points are incorrect incorrect with respect to the india digital payment report of quarter 3 2022 released by world line india in december 2022 so let's find out which statement is basically incorrect more than 23 billion digital payment transactions for rupees 38.32 trillion rupees were made in july september 2022 this statement is basically correct upa recorded more than 20.35 billion transactions for rupees 30.6 trillion in quarter 3 of 2022 this is wrong statement because upa recorded more than 19.65 billion transactions for rupees 32.5 trillion rupees in quarter 3 of financial year 2022 this statement is wrong statement credit card volume and value was 725 million and rupees 3.5 trillion with 386 million transactions at a point of sales this statement is also true and the top 3 upi apps in terms of volume and value is phone pay google pay and paytm in quarter 3 2022 the volume and the value of debit card transactions were 907 and 907 million and 1.88 trillion rupees respectively and the volume and the value of debit card transactions were 907 million and 1.88 trillion respectively this statement is also true so it means all these statements are correct only second statement is incorrect so answer of this question is second move into next question Which of the following Indian billionaires were named in the 16th edition of the Forbes Asia Heroes of Philanthropy list released in December 2022? And uh, this is Gautam Adani, Shiv Nadar, and Ashok Sutha. So answer of this question is all one to three. So India's richest person, Gautam Adani, the chairman of Adani Group, Shiv Nadar, the founder of HCL Technologies, and Ashok Sutha, the executive chairman of Happiest Mind Technology, along with Malaysian couple. Baramal Vasudevan and his wife Shanti Kandia a lawyer were featured on the Forbes Asia 2022 Heroes of Philanthropy list and 2022 list is the 16th edition of the Forbes annual list that highlights the region's top philanthropists who demonstrated a strong personal commitment to causes like education and the environment and Malaysian Indian Baramal Vasudevan founder and CEO of Kuala Lumpur based private equity firm known as Creader 
and his wife Shanti Kandia, a lawyer, supports local communities in both Malaysia and India through the Creator Foundation, co-founded in the year of 2018. Moving to next question. Who has recently received the Prime Minister Prizes for Science 2022 in Australia under the Prime Minister's Prize for Excellence in Science Teaching in the Scandinavian Schools category? So, just remember the question as same as in slide and this is Veena Nair. Answer of this question is second. Veena Nair, an Indian origin teacher in Melbourne in Australia, has received the Prime Minister Prizes for Science 2022 under the Prime Minister Prize for Excellence in Science Teaching in the Scandinavian School category. And Veena Nair, Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Mathematics team, project leader, head of the technology at the Viewbank College in Melbourne, Australia was honored for demonstrating the practical application of STEAM to students. Prime Minister Prize for Science is the most prestigious prize in Australia for outstanding achievement in scientific research, research-based innovation and excellence in science teaching. Moving to next question. Dash was declared as the word of the year for 2022 by Oxford English Dictionary. So this is most important question because this word is declared by Oxford English Dictionary and this word is Goblin Mode. Answer of this question is 4. And Goblin Mode is a slang term that refers to a type of behavior which is unapologetically self-indulgent, lazy, greedy, typically in a way that rejects the social norms, social norms or expectation. For the first time, the choice of the word of the year was open to public voting. Around 3 lakh English speakers voted for around a period of 2 weeks. And the Oxford English Dictionary has chosen Goblin Mode as the word of the year by online vote. And Goblin Mode received 93% of the votes against a contender. Metaverse, Metaverse was on the second position. Moving to next question. Who has been recently elected as the first female president of the Table Tennis Federation of India? Again, most important question. First female president of the Table Tennis Federation of India and this personality is Meghna Alawat. Answer of this question is second. Meghna Alawat was selected as the first female president of Table Tennis Federation and the former Indian table tennis player Kamlesh Mehta. Kamlesh Mehta, an eight-time national champion and Arjun awardee took over as the new secretary general, new secretary general of the Table Tennis Federation of India. Meghna Alawat is the wife of outgoing president Dushyant Chotala, Deputy Chief Minister of Haryana. Moving to next question. Which year is declared as the International Year of the Millets by the United Nations? International Year of Millets. This is the year of 2023. This is static question. Just remember the question as same as in slide. Next question is. In which city India's first drone skilling and training virtual e-learning platform was recently inaugurated? by Union Minister Anurag Singh Thakurji. And this place is Chennai, Tamil Nadu. Answer of this question is 3. So remember, the Union Minister Anurag Singh Thakurji under the Ministry of Youth Affairs and the Sports, the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting inaugurated India's first drone skilling and training virtual e-learning platform in Chennai, Tamil Nadu. And uh, the Meghalaya government in partnership with the startup Tech Eagle was also unveiled Meghalaya Drone Delivery Network and hub which is Asia's first drone delivery hub and network aimed at providing universal access to healthcare for 2.7 million people of the Meghalaya. Moving to next question. Which organization has recently signed a $3 million project readiness financing agreement with Government of India for designing the Agartala Municipal Infrastructure Development Project? And uh, this is basically belongs to Asian Development Bank. So answer of this question is Four. So, Asian Development Bank and the Government of India inked a $3 million project readiness financing agreement to assist preparatory operations for designing the Agartala Municipality or Agartala Municipal Infrastructure Development Project which aims to strengthen municipal infrastructure in priority areas of Agartala, Tripura. And the partnership aims to strengthen or support the Tripura Government in development of the municipal infrastructure strengthen future investment ready project and improvise resource mobilization of the Agartala Municipal Corporation. Moving to next question. According to the World Bank latest update, India development update navigating the storm raised its GDP forecast for India during the financial year 23 to dash from 6.5%. Earlier they predicted 6.5%. 
but now they predicted 6.9%. Answer of this question is second. So World Bank in its latest report named as India Development Update and they predicted India's growth forecast for the financial year 23 will be 6.9%. Earlier they predicted 6.5%. And uh, World Bank declined India's financial year 23 forecast to 6.5% from 7.5% amid Russia-Ukraine war rising global interest rates and high inflation rate in October 2022. First they predicted 7.5%, then they reduced to 6.5%, now they increased to 6.9%. So the Fitch rating retained India's growth forecast to 7% for the financial year 23 amid stronger than expected outturn in the December edition of the Global Economic Outlook 2022. Moving to next question. Which of the following personalities from India were not listed in the British Broadcasting Corporation 100 Women List 2022? Were not in the list. So, four Indian women, actress, producer, Priyanka Chopra, Shrisha Bandla, aeronautical engineer, Booker Prize author Gitanjali Shiri and social worker Sneha Jawale are featured on the British Broadcasting Corporation 100 Women List 2022, a list of 100 inspiring and influential women from around the world for 2022. So the name which is not in the list is Falguni Nair. So first is the answer. So this is shocking. Move into next question. Name the personality who has recently named as the World Athletes of the Year 2022. Very important question, World Athlete of the Year. First person is Sidney McLaughlin Levron and second person is Armand Mondo Duplantis. So answer of this question is both 1 and 2. So American hurdler and 2022 World Champion Sidney McLaughlin Levron and Swedish pole vaulter and the current Olympic and the world champion Armand Mondo Duplantis have been named as the world athlete of the year 2022. And Mac McLaughlin Levron broke the world woman 400 meter hurdles record twice and Mondo Duplantis has set three new world records in 2022. So just remember world athletes of the year. This is very very important. Moving to the next question. In December 2022, Aditya Mittal became India's Dash Chess Grandmaster during the third edition of Al Lobroget Open Chess Tournament in Spain. And this is 77th Grandmaster of India. Answer of this question is 3. So he belongs to Mumbai, Maharashtra. Aditya Mittal is 16 year old, has become the 77th Chess Grandmaster during an ongoing third edition of the Open Chess Tournament in Spain. And Aditya Mittal, who has secured three Grandmaster norms and crossed the 2500 LO points, marked during the sixth round of the ongoing tournament in Spain. He becomes Mumbai's second and Maharashtra's 11th Grandmaster. And earlier, the first Grandmaster from Mumbai was Praveen Thipse in 1997. And he is the fifth Indian to achieve the Grandmaster title in 2022 after Bharat Subramaniam. Rahul Srivastav, Rahul Srivastav was 74th Grandmaster, V Pranav was 75th Grandmaster and Pranav Anand was 76th Grandmaster. To become a Grandmaster, a player has to secure 3 Grandmaster norms and cross the live rating of 2500 LO points. Moving to next question. The United Nations International Civil Aviation Day 2022 observed across the globe on which day? It was observed on 7th of December 2022. So answer of this question is 4. And the theme is advancing innovation, advancing innovation for global aviation development. And the day also highlights the unique role of the International Civil Aviation Organization, which is a United Nations specialized agency in supporting the member states to cooperate and realize the global rapid transit network. Moving to next question. Which metro system has recently entered into the Guinness Book of the World Records for creating the longest double-decker via duct metro measuring 3.14 km on the Varda road? So again static question and this is Nagpur metro. Answer of this question is second. So Nagpur metro in Maharashtra area has entered the Guinness Book of World Record for creating the longest double-decker via duct metro measuring 3.14 km on the Varda road. And Maha Metro MD Brijesh Dixit received a certificate for the achievement from judge and a adjugator of the Guinness World Record Rishi Nath at an event in the Metro Bhavan. 
and the double decker viaduct has already been certified as the longest structure in the asia and india by the asia book of records and india book of records respectively moving to next question name the company that has recently introduced a new range of international roaming plans for postpaid as well as the prepaid users through the world pass through the world pass this is bharti airtel again this is interesting and static question bharti airtel a telecom giant has introduced a new range of international roaming plans for postpaid as well as the prepaid users through world pass and according to the airtel these latest plan will be functional across 185 countries it means that users can travel to two or more countries within a single roaming pack without buying a new pack moving to next question India's largest botanical garden Acharya Jagdish Chander Bose Indian Botanical Garden is located in which city or which state and this is in West Bengal answer of this question is 4 India's largest botanical garden Acharya Jagdish Chander Bose Indian Botanical Garden in Havra West Bengal is under threat due to severe land erosion by Ganga river experts flag during a recent site visit and the garden is under the jurisdiction of the botanical survey of india and the calcutta port trust has jurisdictional command over the length of the river from farakka to ganga sagar so this is all for today i think you like this video please like share and subscribe our channel thank you for watching this video and you can join our all platform like facebook instagram linkedin and telegram channel and telegram channel link is given in the description box and thank you again for watching this video please like share and subscribe thank you guys take care and bye bye